Hey beautiful, welcome to Unapologetic at 50. I am your host, Sharon Fields. This is an uncapped community discussing real life issues. In your 50s, you have the right to say, I have no time for games. Never regret in the past or apologizing for wanting a better future. Join me and special guests as we discuss topics and provide tools to navigate our midlife challenges. Hello, beautiful people. I am Sharon Fields and the host of Unapologetic at 50. I am so excited to introduce to you my guest. Her name is Terry Matson. She is a keynote speaker, corporate wellness expert, and the creator and founder of Beginning Today Lifestyle Wellness LLC. And that's just the start. I'll allow her to tell you the rest of the things that she has been able to accomplish over the years. But I really wanted her to join us today and tell you about her journey, how she got started, and how she's helping others in so many different areas. I know that the podcast is unapologetic at 50. But this is something that all of us should be listening to and sharing with the people that we love and we care about. I'll let her continue. Without further ado, I am introducing Terry Matson. How are you, Terry? I'm I'm doing great, Sharon. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. We've gone back and forth a little bit on emails. We have a mutual acquaintance. So it's fun to be here and to see you. And I'm just thrilled, thrilled that you're taking a chance and sharing your audience with me. And it doesn't, it doesn't ring lightly because it, it is, it's awful um, challenging sometimes to introduce someone that you're not extremely well familiar with and put the people that trust you out there and you never know what's going to happen, right? So. <laughs> so true. But I did have the opportunity to talk to you and perfect fit. You definitely Absolutely. are. All right, so let's get started. I did tell a little bit about your background, but if you could talk about your journey, how you got started and how you actually ended up where you are today. Well, that's so exciting. And there's so many levels to that. I am a mother of four grown boys. So, you know, I worked most of my life since I was 14 doing this, that, and the other thing. And then um, when we had children, I decided to stay home, raised four boys. It was a great ride, was very busy with all that, you know, volunteer extraordinaire and being somebody else's somebody for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, then, yeah, I, yeah, it is. It, it is. You're somebody's wife and someone's mom. And, you know, there's all that going going on. And, and then I, honestly, when my kids, my youngest, two, I think we're still in school. I went back to school. I went to college and I, oh, I believe I was 47 years old when I finished and got my business degree and just had to do something. It's like now time for me, right? Time right. for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want it. What, what's out there for me? What can I do? How can I create? How can I reinvent me? How can I find me? Where'd I go? So, you know, it was exciting. It was a great ride. So fun being in school with kids the same age as my kids. (laughs) I bet. (laughs) But you did it. You got it done. (laughs) Absolutely. But, you know, when you're determined and you run it, you you do it. You do it in uh, uh, probably fairly quick time. But after that, you know, I um, trying to find myself and took some coaching classes and got certified as an integrative health and wellness coach and able to start working with people. And I was, I was a leader for Weight Watchers for a while, mm-hmm. so helping people find their best self on the scale. And after a while, I realized that there is so much more to wellness yes. than the number on a scale. And when you're working for somebody else and that's the focus, it's, it, you know, you have to stay focused. You have to give, do them right. This is what they want you to talk about. It's what you talk about. But eventually it got to be a little hard to see the different needs that were out there, what people wanted. And so I left Weight Watchers to kind of decide what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go. And people encouraged me to go in and open my own practice and, and continue to coach people and uh, be a life coach. So then there's the research of that. Is that something I can do on my own without the support of a company behind me? Mm-hmm. You know, that's <laughs> awesome because I think that in most cases, we we have a starting place, right? 
And the things that we go through in our lives, and I say this all the time, really isn't about us, right? We go through it, we learn from it, and then we help other people. So I think in your situation, that was definitely it. That was your starting point. But as you were helping people, you saw there was more. There was more that you could offer. There were certain areas that weren't being touched, right? Or you weren't oh. able to help people in working specifically in that area. Sharon, you're right on point. That's exactly right. And, you know, had I not been home with the kids for all those years and, and kind of figuring things out and um, leading that life, I don't know if I'd have been ready to be somebody else's coach, you know, the, the person that guides and champions them, them to get to be their best self. And well, that's great. And I loved it. When you talk about, you don't know what doors can open. You don't know where you're supposed to be. You don't know, you know, how are you going to help other people? Because if you're, when you're in the coaching field, you're always looking to see how can you better up someone? How can you help somebody? It's just how, where your heart is, what, you know, you see a need and you want to help. Long story short, my mom ended up getting very ill, very ill. She was misdiagnosed and I'll just leave all those details out. But the point of that matter is she ended up in a senior community. It okay. was skilled nursing, but it's all the same. Senior community, skilled nursing, mm-hmm. elder home. And so I would go visit her. She was in another state. I'm in, I'm in Minnesota. I don't know if people know that. And my family, I grew up in Iowa. So I went back to Iowa and I would stay with her in her room for like, you know, a week at a time. And then I go to the lunch and meet the other people that are there. And you sit and you have a little lunch with, with these Uh new elder friends. And they're like, what do you do? And I'd say, well, I talk about wellness and I speak to groups and tell, talk about, you know, bringing things mindful and up to front. And well, I love that. And it was just through organic conversation with them that I thought, why does nobody working with the seniors, they have so much to offer. They're so curious. Uh-huh. They're so curious and they want, they, they need to feel valued. They want to feel valued. Their opinions, their opinions, opinion is extremely valuable. And yes. you know, they just want somebody to listen to them and know that they are still relevant. So next Absolutely. thing I know, I'm uh-huh. creating the programs and now I'm going into the senior communities as well. So it was just another branch to your point, Sharon, of you don't know what opens up in front of you until it opens up. And then hopefully you'll walk through the door and, and take on that new opportunity. Correct. Correct. I am just like, you, you've said so many things already, which uh, should be an inspiration and a motivation to others. Um, right down to the fact of going back to school, right? After raising your children um, and obtaining your degree. There are so many women that think, well, you know, now, especially with the women that I work with and talk to, I'm in my 50s now, it's too late. No, it's never too late. Whenever there's an opportunity, right, and there's something that is on your heart, something that you always wanted to do, I say go for it. It may take you a little bit longer. It doesn't matter. Go for it while you have the opportunity. Well, and if you don't explore it, you don't know what, what you could have done. And, and I've said this to people, you don't want to all of a sudden be, you know, 80 years old and look back and go, darn, I wished I would have done that. Right. I, you know, why didn't I try? Why didn't I do it? So you're 50. So you're 60. I mean, I know um, a gal who's like 65. She went back to law school and she's an attorney. All right. You know, That's right. You're driven. And if you're interested, go. And the thing about people uh, of a certain age is there is a way that some of your life experience counts for academic credit. Correct. Mm -hmm. You don't know that if you don't go sit in and um, sit down and talk to somebody in, you know, in, in the office that makes those decisions. So be curious, stay curious. You know, every child you ever meet as curious as can be never stops asking questions or why. Go ahead, ask questions. Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100%. And there are a lot of programs that are offering life skills. You know, you use that. That is a certain amount of credits or whatever. So I agree with you 100%. Go and ask. Go find out. Not only that, it you might think that it is something that you want to do, but find out that that really isn't it, but it's something else that caught your attention. 
you know? So again, you don't know until you actually get out there and try. But let's get back to your story in reference to going from Weight Watchers and helping people there. And that was a blessing in itself with being able to see that you had a heart for the senior community and being able to help them as well. But you also do corporate work, correct? Absolutely. So tell Mm -hmm. us about that. So that's an opportunity to go into companies and it's a 12 week series. So what I do is I I get hired on by the company and whether it's five or 55 students, participants, clients, we we generally call them members of the group. We all get together for a half hour, one day a week, same time, same day, once a week. And I introduce new wellness tips every single week. So we grow. And we cover mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual aspect of wellness. So try to section them off into months of of the different work. And I always say, I always open up with mental, the food part, you know, the Mm -hmm. the eating part, the um, healthy part, the the big picture that everybody kind of understands. And then generally I like to move into the physical part. And then we move into the other areas because it, it is just such a rich topic And when I go into companies and do this work, I always have a handout. Everybody comes, everybody participates. This is the kind of thing where you get people talking and communicating Mm -hmm. and it creates that bond between the coworkers, creating that family experience, giving them something else, a, a new reason to come to the office, a new reason to, to call this place home. I mean, for heaven's sakes, you're, when you're working, and I know it's different now because of COVID and not everybody's going into the office, but I do this on Zoom too, once a week, and we get together and talk. Mm-hmm. But you start to take ownership of the company because you know you're part of the company. Right. And, and you don't just work for them. You are them and you're the face of them. And you're meeting your other coworkers. So when you get together and you're talking about stuff, you have other stuff to talk about besides, oh, you know, blah, 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 didn't go well. And that manager, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it just gives them a lighter heart and something more to talk about. Oh, are you doing the water challenge? And um, did you go to last month's meeting? And we had that breakthrough with with this and that. And um, what are your, what vitamins are you taking? And when are you mm-hmm. going to start doing this? And, okay, we're going to start up a lunch, um, a walking group. And you can do that with Zoom too. Everybody, you know, we meet at 12. So everybody take off, you know, 15 and get a half hour, come back and then we'll talk about our walk. So nice. just, right. So there's so much flexibility you can do with keeping people engaged. And retention is huge, especially right now. People are, they're depressed. They're looking, they're not happy. They're looking for an answer. They want something different. Some other company will offer them, you know, a quarter, an hour more of a raise. Then eh, why not? Not they go. Well, you know how much it costs a company to train someone new? Yeah. So bring them a program that they can own and feel very, uh, you know, wh- why do you work there? I work there because they bring in this consultant. We do this wellness program and I'm active and I get to be part of it. And and they care. They care. They care. That is it. They care because, you know, um, yes, COVID has changed a lot of things. We're not physically going to the office, but when you're working, it's eight to 10 hours a day, if not sometimes more, depending on the position. So the bulk of your day is, you know, spent on your job. And when you were physically going there, it was around a group of people. So what you're doing is awesome because it's also providing accountability. You have your, you know, your cohorts, co-workers, all of that, that are egging you on, making sure that you are staying focused, right? And also helping you in the areas that you fall short, short, excuse me, with those conversations or just saying, hey, did you know that you could join X, Y, and Z? So that is definitely awesome. And they look for you, you're, you're creating these relationships. And it's like, if, if, if someone doesn't show up, someone's wondering where they are, well, let me call them. So it it just glues people together and really gels and they, everybody feels valued. And and that's, what's so important to know that your opinion matters. So true. Because I guess I'm what happened, (laughs) you know, but the wellness program in and of itself, it helps people remember to get up and move, to eat healthy. 
I've talked to more people about, you know, they're not moving and they're eating junk. And yeah, I even had to admit, I do, I, I do a blog and different things and I'm no different than anybody else. One week I looked in my, my garbage can that sits by my desk. <laughs> I couldn't believe the wrappers in there. <laughs> yeah. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> It yeah. does. That that's a part of life, right? But I think the thing is realizing, like, hey, I may have fell off for a little bit, right? But I know what works best for me. I know where it is that I'm trying to go, what my goals are, and that's not gonna keep me on track for my goal. So I did that. Done. Not gonna dwell on it because you can't change yesterday. You can. I love it. that, Sharon. I I did that. Done. I love that. You gotta walk. <laughs> That's in the past. You can't change it. Don't dwell on it. Don't sit around with it. Just you're done. Done with it. Move on. It's all good. Don't don't be so hard on yourself. Don't judge yourself any harder than you would, you know, your your dear friend. So, yeah, what happened happened. It's been in the past. Today's a new day. This is a new hour. You know, move on. It's okay. So true. And um, even in that, I think that that's another thing that causes us to. Uh, go off track and never make the decision to get back on is the judgment. We judge ourselves harder than other people do. Right. And we just have to know how to let that go because there are no perfect people. Right. That doesn't exist. You know what I mean? And as they say, you you just be yourself because everybody else is already taken. So (laughs) that's good. Yes. (laughs) Just to enjoy, but never stop wondering. I mean, it comes back to, I think, almost how you opened, Sharon. Never stop wondering. Never stop being curious. Never stop asking questions. There's a lot out there. You get one life. You were put here. You get one life. Live it. Live it. Don't miss out. You've already spent how many? How much time now sitting back on your heels going, well, probably should have done that. Well, you know what? By 10 years ago, five years ago, well, last year, do you know it's all just waiting for you. It's all sitting right. in front of you. You just got to change your mindset. You got to change your attitude. It's all right in between here. The whole, the whole stop signs, the whole, I can't, I won't. That apostrophe T thing has just got to go. Just got to go. <laughs> <Gotta> go. <laughs> what type of tips would you offer uh, someone who is just starting out, you know, and maybe they do have issues with their eating habits But before you tell us, the one thing that I want to say is, and what I coach my clients is, is always more than just that. We need to be open to see the whole picture. And I love being able to coach people and, you know, be an accountability partner because a lot of times they will start talking about one thing. And that opens it up to the gist of what is really going on. And we never think of it in that matter. We never tie those things together to really understand what is going on with us. You're right. That's so true. And that's in the the one on the one on one coaching, the personal coaching, the life coaching that I do. You know, if we're okay, so let's just back that up and let's put this in real simple. I just want some quick tips. Tell me, you know, I kind of got it all going on. I just want something to help me, right? Okay, great. I need you to get a journal. And I actually wrote a journal. I don't, I don't know if you saw it, but here's because I do all this speaking. So I actually, you oh, know, okay. what did you do? How do you how what what can we do when you're not here? And you know, it's got all the track. Nice. Okay. And, but you don't need anything like this. This is just because people ask, right? What you need is a piece of paper and a pencil, or you need mm-hmm. your cell phone, or or you need your laptop, and you need to track. You need to write down. You know, had this. You know, if you're worried about your weight, concerned about your weight, and or your activity, I walked for a half hour. You know, I ate uh, peaches and sliced ham. I drank eight ounces of water. I mean, whatever it is you do, you need to write this stuff down. So that you can look back and look at it, and then you can start to see your picture. So if you're working, right. on, I work with a lot of do-it-yourselfers. So that's kind of like you know, you just want to do something for yourself. I don't want to invest a lot of money. I don't. I don't. I'm not ready for a coach. Um, sometimes we have to, you know, come come to that on our own. Mm-hmm. Just write it down, track it. What time did you get up? Record that. What did you do? What did you eat? What? How did you move your body? How much did you drink? Did you remember to take your vitamins? 
what time to go to bed. And if I can get you to do it, that's the next step. How did you feel after each meal? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. After each meal and after you got done working out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the basic bam. That's what you can do today, right now. Get a piece of paper out and just start writing it down and tracking it. And after you do it a week and you look back, you're going to start seeing a pattern. Right. But just the fact that you're writing stuff down makes you more mindful and aware of your behavior. And you will make some of those changes that you wanted to, but it's called mindfulness. Mm-hmm. You can't just float through every day and expect and expect change. That's not how change works. Exactly. Um, I talk to my people all the time about journaling. It's freeing, right? It also allows you to get rid of some of those things that are going on in your head because uh, listen, we all have head trash. That's what I'm gonna call it. It's just stuff all up in there. You need to get rid of it. You should have got rid of it a long time ago, but life is happening because life never stops. Right. So on that head trash thing, if you write it down, you can be done with it. Uh-huh. But if you don't write it down, you think about it and think about it and think about it. And it goes on and on because yes. you didn't really get the time it needed. But if you write it down, it's just kind of almost like you've opened up the gate and it walked out and you shut the gate. And that's uh-huh. the end. I mean, not every time. And it depends on <laughs> how trashy the head trash is. <laughs> but, you know, some, of that, some of that stuff, just write it down and be done with it already. But um, I'm sure you do an intake evaluation, which is where I start with my one-on-ones. I do. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's where some of this stuff pops up and they're writing things out and it gives you a basis to go on. And as you say, so many people think it's a weight issue. And so as as your um, sessions go on, you start peeling away that onion Mm -hmm. and find out that the weight issue is the one thing that they could name but it's actually something else in there. So and true. once you get to the something else, that's where um, I know for me, it seems like a lot. That's where the happiness comes from. Once we find out what that something else is and we talk about it a little bit and we do some of the, um, some of the, some of the different things that we do, you know, we all have workbooks and we have assignments and um, do some of those things together and as homework on your own. And you start to, own some of that because once you own it and name it you can start to throw it away Uh but until it comes out and you deal with it and own it and forgive yourself for it forgive yourself for it that is good yeah yeah Yeah. absolutely you know and um it just doesn't it doesn't it isn't who you are it's something or you know it it doesn't it is it isn't you It, it isn't you don't own it so let it go Mm-hmm. But until we until we find out what it is, you're, you can't so- do that, right? Because it, it's just there, it's lingering, and um, yeah, that that is one of the best things that you can do, and it takes time though to get there. Mm-hmm. And well, it does. Um, but you the know, happiness that comes with it, right? Mm-hmm. Once once people realize when they've identified it, that's kind of a um, that's not such a happy point. But once you help them walk through it, it's like the is the happiness because they're so it's so freeing to not that is it I was gonna say freedom freeing freeing excuse me yeah the freedom of it absolutely but if you think about it anyway even when you start doing exercise right you do exercise you are sore right Mm. you're having these pains and you're having these aches and that is the the muscle tearing and things of that nature, right? And that additional fluid that's building up and things are healing back together again. It's the mm-hmm. same concept. No, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel good initially, but what you get from it is amazing and it is freeing. So I agree with you 100%. Right, right. Yeah. And everybody deserves to be happy. Everybody deserves to feel a little bit better than where they were before. And nobody owns happiness. Nobody owns wellness. Nobody owns, you know, it doesn't belong to any one person. It belongs to all of us. And when you think about how much better it is to be on the inside looking out than the outside, always looking in, Uh you know, get on the wellness wagon, get on, get on that train and be part of the inside, discover your best self, small changes, maximum results. Discover your best self one small piece at a time, because to your point, it can be awful hard and awful painful. You know, 
um, when you talk about exercise and working out, you, you kind of ease into it because if you hit it full bore, what happens? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's overwhelming. You're in so much pain and then you don't go back. You don't finish because you're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to feel that. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Take your time, pace yourself. Right. So you can get to where you really need to be. And another thing that you said was you spoke about wellness because so often when you say something to someone about wellness, they automatically go to what they're eating and consumption, right? But wellness is way more than that, right? Yes. And it's it's balance, right? In multiple areas of our lives. Um, and it's areas that a lot of people don't even think about. Yeah, we do say, um, you know, holistically, mind, body, and spirit, right? And absolutely, because we are all, that is what we're made up of. And that's what I believe anyway. But um, there's, you know, how you socialize with people, the relationships that you have. Yeah, it is about how you eat, but there's many types of consumption too, right? So that's when you start getting to the heart of things and really speaking with people or whoever you're coaching or talking to, to see exactly what type of help that they need. And I am so thankful that we have people like you, Terry, that are out there doing exactly what you're doing to help people and to help them at the level that you are. I did read your bio and it says that you have been doing this now for about 14, 16 years, right? Probably Maybe. longer than that because when you know it's in your heart, you probably have been helping people all along. You just decided later on to put a title to it. That's right. <laughs> and, and it is, you know, and wellness is about bringing people together and, you know, helping people figure out who and what works and complements them best, mm -hmm. helping people get through some of that toxic experience that they're yeah. in. Um, and again, it's not just food. You know, you've got to get rid of the, the those toxic people, those toxic situations, um, the, those toxic locations. So it, it's a bigger picture. And again, you know, it, it, it's more than just um, what did you eat? Where where did you eat it? Who were you eating it with? Mm -hmm. What were you doing when you were, you know, eating? And just figuring out where that balance is. And to your point of the holistic piece, usually when you're looking for that balance, you might think mostly, mostly this is out of sync until you start working it. But this is never going to get in sync. If you don't pick these other pieces up and get them balanced out too, correct? If, you know, whatever spirituality that that everybody focuses on. I, I'm a Christian, but I I think that there are all kinds of spiritual choices. And if <laughs> yours is just Mother Nature and you know being out there and meditating and that that's great, but don't forget to do it. Right? You can't just uh -huh. say. I don't have, I'm not spiritual at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got to figure out where that is. Or we need to help you bring that to a higher level. Mm -hmm. Because until you sit and give thanks, until you sit and have gratitude, you're, you're, you're never going to get even. You're always going to be slightly off because all of that works together. It is Absolutely. Just yeah. Universe, if that's your thing, universe is saying, what, why am I going to give you more? You're not even happy about what I'm giving you. God is saying the same thing. You know what I mean? I, I mean, just think about it. No, you don't need more because you're not happy with what you already got. So be grateful <laughs> for even the small things, right? Yeah, right. I agree. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. So um, how would people connect with you? if they were interested in learning more about your services, is it only specific companies that you work with? Um, no. Okay. Tell no, us. I'm, well, I, when I'm working with companies, my, my niche is the small to medium. And because I can turn, I can turn quickly because it's me. So I have a program. I have the 12 week program. And then I have the deeper, usually after we go through the 12 week program, if they renew, I know more what they want. And so we focus more in um, a general area for a little bit longer. And we do that sort of thing, but we move around. It's everyone. I actually worked with a law firm. I've worked with a pharmaceutical company, worked with big box, worked with real estate. So it, there isn't any one company 
that, and I've worked with everything from the, um, the guy that sweeps the, the back office to the CEO of the company. Mm -hmm. I really like them all to come in together all to be, because if it's important enough for this person, then everybody feels like it's important enough for me. And they also get the encouragement. Yes. It's okay that you do this. Yeah. So, you know, the, the really big companies, they tend to have different, different wellness programs, which, you know, work for some, but not for everybody because you get lost in the wagon wheel of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. really not a lot of accountability to it. So I, I like the smaller companies better. And with the senior communities, mostly what I do with them is just come in and do the one hour. I call them the power hours. And I have a number of different presentations. I can do those in corporate. And I also do them in the seniors. And they're interactive, just a little bit differently interactive with the groups. I bet yes. the seniors love that because oh. now they have someone that, you know, you have this scheduled time. I'm, I'm sure that they all know you. They probably look at you as a daughter or a niece or something by now. <laughs> right. They all, so they all yeah. come early. It's the best. I always go early and I always stay late and mm -hmm. they come in there and you always have the ones that they come because they want that front row off to the right. <laughs> <laughs> So there's all, and then of course the people who stick around afterwards, you know, you just got to give them the love, give, show them, show them respect. And, and they love it because they do. I, I am very respectful of them and I value everything they say. And they do have a voice in my meetings. If you want to get a hold of me, Terry at beginning dash today.com. You got to make that hyphen in there. You won't find me. So Terry at beginning dash today.com. That's going to put you right in my website. And then all my, if that's all you remember, um, that's great because my phone number's in there, my email, you know, that's my email. That's my, or well, beginning-today.com is the website, beginning-today, www.beginning-today.com. That's the website. And in there, you'll see all the offerings that I have. You can get the planner through the website. I just published an ebook that's on there. And if you purchase the ebook, $2 of that purchase is going to the Red Kettle campaign. As you know, right now, they're, the bell ringers are, well, there's not so many of them. They're not getting out there because of the way things are right now. And people aren't shopping. They're not getting out there. Right. So their donations are not coming in. And what an important time of year with depression coming up as it does. Mm -hmm. People need to know that someone cares. They need, they need those donations. They need to be able to have the food, the clothing. So if you purchase the ebook, $2 of that goes to the um, Salvation Army Red Kettle campaign. Mm -hmm. That's on my website. And, um, you know, I do everything Zoom. So we can do a company 12-week series Zoom. We can do the Power Hour Zoom. I just did the three, I think I told you, but it was before your guests were on. I did a three hour retreat on Zoom. Now I did that in person. <clears throat> I had to cut it back a lot, but people can only sit in front of a computer for so long. <laughs> it was a it was set up for four and a half hours, three hours of material, but you got to let people move around. And, uh -huh. and I love the interaction. So there's, you know, I have a workbook all set up for it. So if we, if we did that, I would encourage us to do it like in two days. But, um, you know, I did it in three hours. We just cut a lot of the information out and I did a few handouts instead of the entire workbook. So there's all kinds of ways to bring wellness right to people's doors without um, anybody having to leave where they are. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for all of that information and everything that you discussed with us today. It was definitely a pleasure to have you here. Um, you are a friend of the show. Anytime you have any uh, you know, new programs or sessions or anything of that nature, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to have you back again. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to collaborate and do something in the future uh, once we are, you know, Know, our lives have changed again because of COVID. How about that? Great. <laughs> um, Karen, I'd love to collaborate with you. I think this could be something we could have a lot of fun with um, sharing your side and my side. And since I know I'm a guest on your show, we didn't, um, you know, your, your listeners know um, much about you. So it'd be fun to do something in a joint effort where people get kind of the best of both that don't already have that opportunity. 
So let's do it. We will chat about that. And wherever you need me, I am there. I really appreciate you coming on my show from the bottom of my heart. And I am so happy that we have had this time together. All of your contact information will be available to all the listeners. All right. So until we chat again, thank you and stay well. You too. And and all your audience. Love it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank Have a you, good Terry. Night. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Unapologetic at 50. Together, we will learn how to maneuver life's challenges while being our authentic selves without regret. Remember to subscribe to Unapologetic at 50 to be notified of new episodes. Don't be salty with me if you are the last to know. And never apologize for being the best version of you.